Welcome everyone to this week's This Week on the Courts. Uh, my name is Jesse Daw. And I'm Carol McKee. And we're here at Heather Family Match Point. So yeah, thanks we're for joining us. Some tennis. Yeah. But first, um, big weekend this weekend. Uh, I actually have my Wonder Woman mug with me because yeah. this was a great weekend for American women's sports. It was, yes. Uh, two World Cups. Yeah. On Saturday, the U.S. women's national team won the FIFA World Cup up in Canada, 5-2. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Amazing performance by the yeah. national team women. And then also on Sunday, we had um, the U.S. World, or the World Cup of softball, and the U.S. women won that as well. I did not know that. 6-1, and in both of those World Cup championships, we defeated Japan. Oh, really? So wow. Was kind of where, a, where was the softball played? It was out in California. Oh. I think it was Irvine, California, and um, the U.S. women have won that many times, but they lost hmm. in 2011, I think, okay. to Japan. Oh, wow. And, of course, the last World women's FIFA World Cup, yeah. the U.S. women lost to, to Japan. Japan. So yeah. it was kind of a... It was a U.S. Uh, recapture uh, weekend. Yeah, yeah, so. U.S. over Japan, and yeah. boy, the the soccer. I watched a little bit of it, and I and when I turned it on, you know, I'm not a huge soccer. I don't know as much as you do about soccer, <laughs> but it looked like 4-0, and it and the game had just started, and I was like, that can't be right, um. and I was so <laughs> bothered. I, you know, I started watching. I think about 6:20 or 6:25, and I was sure that the game started at six, mm. and I was like, somebody, <laughs> somebody miss. You know, yeah. I had the wrong time. Yeah, and you but, were you weren't feeling well, so maybe right, it was, right. But you know, it was uh, within six minutes. Carly Lloyd, who wound up winning the golden ball. Yeah. Carly Lloyd had two goals, yeah. which they call a brace in soccer. A brace. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, within 15 minutes, we had three goals. Oh wow! Uh, it was just it was great watching. Yeah, that. and I that's didn't amazing. Get to watch the women's. Um, softball yeah. World Cup. But yeah, I didn't even know that one was on. Uh, but yeah, we really dominate in world, women's softball. Yeah, well. and that's why I'm surprised that there wasn't a lot of coverage, and I didn't even know that that was going yeah. on. Well, and um, that happens every year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, women, the FIFA Women's World Cup of, of soccer is every four, four years. Four years, so. right. I didn't know that. They're probably the yeah. tension yeah. is I, I, all pent up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw an interesting article um, that was published, I think, right before the World Cup final that talked about um, most of the U.S. Uh, World Cup players for the oh. soccer team were actually multi-sport players yes. into, you know, until college. Um, and so that was kind of interesting to see. And, and actually there was another article that talked about how um, being cut from youth programs served as a source of motivation yes. for many of them. It really can if, yeah. parents, if parents guide it correctly. Right. Um, you know, a lot of times the, the pain of being cut from the team can be further exacerbated by the parents' inability to accept it right. and help the child move forward. Yeah. Um, and I've seen that time and again. Mm -hmm. um, but it can be a great motivator. And it's also a great opportunity for kids to try new sports. It is. Because there's a sport out there for every every kid. Yeah, there, there is. And, and there are other teams for kids, too. Mm -hmm. If they... If if, they, if they're in a sport that they love and you know something happens and they don't make a cut you know try another league or another yeah. you know another sport another league of the same sport stay active stay involved keep playing well Mark Ovenden with KDLT did a story about um, Piers Landon Badger now Landon doesn't play tennis but he plays both baseball and hockey okay and he was athlete of the week for KDLT mm. um, congratulations Landon yes but um, one of the things that that was pointed out in the, the story that Mark did with with Landon is Landon said that his coaches had always encouraged him to try other sports, yeah. to develop his skills in a variety of sports, mm -hmm. and he truly he feels it's made him a much better hockey and baseball player. Yeah, and I, I think that that's really critical that coaches and parents embrace that multi-sport perspective. Um, you know, we're seeing, I think we've moved into this, uh, you know, era of, of increased pressure to specialize, but I think we're seeing the backlash against that, and I think that's a good backlash uh, as both medical professionals as well as uh, sports leaders are coming out and saying, you know, uh, the the athletes who are doing better are multi-sport athletes for, you know, a longer time period. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Well, and one of the sports that's going on right now, you know, typically we'd be talking about Sioux Falls tennis or South Dakota tennis tournaments, right? Right. Yeah. Well, we didn't have any over the Fourth of July weekend, but yep. there was a tournament that was going on. There is a tournament going across on across the big water. Right. Over in England, uh, Wimbledon. Wimbledon. You know, how can we talk tennis without talking? I know about Wimbledon? Wimbledon is, you know, the the classic traditional Grand Slam tournament. It so. is. And you know, I um, I did a little research because I was so excited about our U.S. women's team's performance yes. this weekend that I, I thought I want to know a little bit more about Wimbledon and how our U.S. players are all doing over there. Awesome. So um, I pulled it up and yeah. discovered that 23 U.S. players entered Wimbledon. Mm -hmm. 
and 16 of them still remain. So that's almost 70% of those who entered into the tournament. That's fantastic. Um, France had 16 that went in. Uh, they have six who are left. Okay. France is another good place for... It tennis. is, it is. Spain went, went in with 16. A quarter of them are left. Wow. Australia went in with 16. They have five left. Mm -hmm. um, the prop leading the way of... what. Well, one of the leaders is the Czech Republic with 15, mm -hmm. and they have 11, 11 of those players remaining. Yeah, 73 um, percent. And then uh, Russia. Russia also has a high percentage. Yes, nine of 11. Yeah, but are still in. U.S. is right up there. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's really, you know, when you look at some of these players, you know, in Russia and, and the Czech, you know, a lot of them actually train in the U.S. Yes. So. Well, and a lot of them, as we've talked about, the college scene. Right. Um, hope to play tennis or yeah. have played college tennis here in the U.S. Yeah. So I pulled it all up to see how many games have been played. Okay. Thought, you know, Wimbledon is huge. It is. Um, yeah. We're partway through the fortnight. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, Good terminology there. Yes. Yesterday was Super Monday. <laughs> yes. Um, the second second Monday of Wimbledon is, yes. is seen as the best tennis in the world. Right. Because you have the final 32 battling it out. Exactly. who goes on to the quarterfinals and yes. singles. So in the women's singles, there have been 120 matches played. That's a lot. 276 sets. Yeah. 2,615 games. Wow. How about the men's? On the men's side, uh, right there with the women in terms of number of matches played, 119 matches played. That's because uh, we had a match that didn't get to wrap up yesterday. Right, and that was uh, Djokovic and uh, Kevin Anderson. Yeah. So, you know, I was I was pulling for the upset there for Kevin Anderson. Um, he's an Illinois alum, played yeah. tennis at the University of Illinois where I played, and but uh, he, he, he fell a short. Battle. Yeah. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but he yeah. had a great battle. Yeah, so 119 matches for the men, uh, 444 sets played, 4,442 games played on the men's side. That's amazing. Unbelievable. Game, set, match. Game, set, and match. <laughs> and they're all being played on 20 courts. Right. That's a lot of courts. It is a lot of courts. A lot of grass to the keep. the center court, which yep. is the... Who doesn't dream of playing tennis oh. in the center court at uh, Wimbledon? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, so yesterday, as I mentioned, was Super mm -hmm. Monday, mm -hmm. and I did have a chance to do a little checking. And with everything else going on, I haven't really got a chance to watch many of the games. Yeah. But, um, Serena Williams, of course. Number yeah. One seed. Kind of a tough situation yeah, there. As, you know, she came up against her sister Venus, and you know they've they've played each other quite a bit yeah. on the tour, but oftentimes it's it's in the finals or the semis. Yeah. And so Venus I'd rather is, have been the semis or the finals. Yeah, yeah. And Venus's seeding's gone down a little bit. She she did make a seed this tournament. She was 16th seed. Uh, Serena was number one. So they actually through the draw met in the round of 16, and so uh, Serena got the win there, 6-4, 6-3. So younger sister uh, comes out on top. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's always good to see the younger one. Yeah. Into it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To, to I'm the youngest, so. Yeah, I <laughs> appreciate that. Yeah. Um, another um, game of note yesterday, Maria Sharapova. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, she's the number four seed. She yep. defeated an unranked player, Zarina Dias, mm -hmm. in Kazakhstan. Yeah. 6-4. Six, 6-4, four. Six, four, yeah. so close match there. And one of your favorite guys. Yeah, Roger Federer. Got my Fed hat on tonight, yeah. one of them. So, uh, defeated Roberto. Batista. I always have a tough time. Roberto with Batista Agu. Agu. Yep. Agu. So from Spain. Yeah. Uh, straight sets. Six two. Six two. Six three. Yep. And then Stan Wawrinka. Yep. I'm getting that name. You're, you're doing well with that uh, one. Better Swiss than me. Player, number four Ray. Yep. He uh, defeated uh, number sixteen David Goffin from I think that's from Belgium. Belgium. Yep. yep. Seven six. I think so. No. Seven six. Seven six. Six four. Right. Super set. Uh, no. Nope. no, those are regular tiebreakers. Regular tiebreakers, yep. okay. So. And then we have some great matches coming up today. Yeah, you know, that Coco Vandeweghe is a big surprise for the USA. I know, isn't um, that great to it, see her? It's so fantastic, well. yeah. I actually, um, uh, Chris Dummerhuth and I attended the USTA National Tennis Teachers Conference in 2010, mm -hmm. and one of the sessions highlighted Coco as a player uh, uh -huh. with one of her coaches working with her on her serve. And so, um, you know, she's also related to Kiki Vandeweghe, who was an okay. NBA basketball player. And so ever, you know, like this. Athletic family. Yeah, right? very athletic family. So to see her, you know, I've kind of, you know, just simply because I, you know, kind of attended a session where she was, you know, participating, I've kind of kept an eye on her. And, and to see her break through here is really just yeah. tremendous. Now, she did defeat uh, Lucy Safarova. Yeah, the sixth from seed. From the Czech Republic succeed yesterday mm -hmm. to advance. Yep. She, unfortunately, uh, you know, I'm pulling for you, Coco. Yep. She's facing Maria Sharpova in yeah. the quarterfinals today. Yeah, but quarter. nothing to lose. Yep, so nothing to lose. Give it all you got. Let's go, Coco. Yeah, go USA. <laughs> yeah, USA. Uh, 
Serena Williams uh, will be playing Victoria Azarenka, and I think yeah. that's it. Yeah. from Belarus. Um, uh, yeah, maybe. I, I, <laughs> I'm not I, sure. don't, I don't know all the, the country abbreviations. I don't either. Um, uh, a lot of the country's names have changed they since have. I took geography yeah. in high school and college. But Azarenka is a former number one player. Oh, wow. So, you know, for her to, she's a 23rd seed right now. Um, she's been a little bit off her game, you know, recently. I mean, still in the seeds. But, you know, as a former number one player, for Serena to match up against her sister one day and then come back and play a former number one, you know, the next day, that's two former number ones in a row. Wow. You know, we'll have to see. See, see how that goes for her. That's going to be could be an exhausting day for her. It can, yeah. Um, another on the center court today, Garbine Muguruza, who's number 20, is facing off against Tamiya Bichins Bichinski, yep. I think, uh, number 15. And okay. then for the U.S. Madison Keys again, another young American who's really, you know, making some waves here at the at Wimbledon. Um, she's she's actually a, a Midwestern uh, girl. She she grew up in the Quad Cities of Illinois, right. and then uh, after she started to get into tennis, she moved down to Florida and has been training down there. And uh, you know, she's into the seeds as well. She's the 21st seed, and she's up against uh, Agnieszka Radwanska from Poland, who's the 13th seed. And uh, Radwanska also, you know, a little bit lower in her seeds than she's been in the past. So that's going to be a tough match for Madison. But, you know, again, we're pulling for you, Madison. We want to see the USA really, yeah. really come through here at Wimbledon. Yeah, and some of, some of these games, by the time we get the show actually airs, they'll, they'll probably be, be done. done. But right. we're, we're hoping that our, sure. our uh, requested outcomes are, are, yes. are granted. Yes. Um, the men's singles fourth round, of course, play continued this morning yep. for defending champion uh, Novak jo Djokovic. Yep. And uh, he's ranked number one, of course. Yes. And he played Kevin Anderson, as you mentioned. Um, yeah, from South Africa, yeah. 14th they, seed. They did um, suspend for darkness on yesterday, mm -hmm. and then it went to a fifth set. And this morning, Djokovic prevailed over Anderson. But, mm, you know, too it was, bad. <laughs> it was five sets. Yeah, I was pulling for Anderson. Yeah. So. Well, and you said he played in Illinois. Yeah, he played at the University of Illinois and was on the uh, NCAA championship team uh, under Coach Craig Tiley. Yeah. So. Well, um, going on, then the senior men's invitational doubles. Now, there's some things I didn't know about Wimbledon. Yeah. I did not realize that they have seniors and they have youth games going on. They have on. juniors, you know, yeah. The juniors are there. Um, mm -hmm. So, Patrick, or Richard Leach, Leach and Patrick McEnroe mm -hmm. this morning from the U.S. defeated Joachim Nystrom and Michael Pernfors, for both of Sweden. Yeah. 6-2-7-5. Uh, yeah. So they got a nice win this morning. Uh, yeah, that is, a, that is a good win. And I'm, gonna, I'm not so sure about this. People, you need to let me know. But didn't Pernfors play for the University of Minnesota? Am I wrong on that? I don't know. I don't know. I think he might have played. I'm not sure, but I think he might have played on a Jerry Noyce's Big Ten Championship team that did really well at nationals in the early '80s. Um, oh, we'll check that I'm out not positive. Maybe I'm just dreaming. We'll but, check that out. Okay. Can see. All that'd, right. That'd be good to know. Um, going on to the men's doubles quarterfinals then. The Bryan brothers. Let's go, Bob and Mike. Um, they're going to play the number nine seeds. I don't even know. <laughs> Rohan Bopana, I think, of India. Yeah. And Florin Murgia of, uh, I'm, I don't know. Uh, Rodeja? I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we can know, just make Finding doubles teams that are all um, American. Yeah, pretty tough. It's tough. It is. And that you know, speaks to the international nature it does. of, of it the. It really uh, does. Yeah. So. so we're, um, we're happy to cheer for those yeah. who find them. Um, I didn't find any U.S. teams, double teams, playing in the ladies' invitational double. Yeah, Serena and Venus were in the draw, um, but they withdrew pretty early on. Okay. So, oh, not I'm, sure exactly why. So yeah. There might be some other ones like that. Okay. Um, and the boys' singles, second round. And this is the part that I was so excited to find. Yeah. That. They've got juniors. They do. The boys. And they're in the second round already for mm -hmm. both boys and girls. Yep. Um, Taylor Fritz of, of the USA, the, all right. top seed. That's fantastic. He's playing Sora Fukuda of Japan. Mm -hmm. He did not have a ranking in there. Okay. And then, uh, do you know uh, Ulysses Blanche? No, I don't know that name. Uh, but. He's an unranked player. Okay. He'll be playing the number 11 seed from Korea, Yoon, so Yoon Sung Chung. Fantastic. And Tommy Paul from the USA is a number seven seed, and he'll be going up against uh, Juan Jose Rosas from I think Peru. Peru, okay. Um, I've seen Michael's name. Michael, I think it's Mo. Mo, yeah, M M O H. Uh, he's a number four seed, and he actually pulled the win 
from Nuno Borges. Yeah, from <laughs> Borges, Portugal. Portugal, 6162. Yeah, it might be Borges. Yeah. Borges. Mm. Um, and then Nathan Ponwith from the U.S. is playing Michael Yemer from Sweden. Uh, yep. That's uh, sweet. Yemer's a number 12 seed. Nathan mm -hmm. doesn't bring in a ranking with him. Okay. That game will be happening today. Um, yep. And another seeded USA player, William Blumber, uh, is going to be playing Alberto Lim, uh, maybe from the Philippines. I think so. Yep. Um, and William Blumber is, is number 10. Right number now. 10 seed, yep. So. And then Emil Rainberg of the USA, uh, unseeded player, will be playing a Canadian, Dennis Shapovalov. Shapovalov? That's what I think. Shapovalov, I would say. So that's who we have, know we have for US players yeah. uh, playing today. Um, I don't didn't see any American U.S. players in the boys doubles today. Okay. Um, and the girls singles though, we do have some U.S. USA players. Yeah, yeah, and that first one on the list is Ingrid Neal. And so uh, tennis, uh, people in the area might know her name. She's from Rochester. And uh, she's she's uh, was invited to Wimbledon this year in the junior draw, so that's pretty exciting for her. And she's gonna play a player from Slovakia, Teresa Mahalikova, who's yeah. the tenth seed. So let's go Ingrid. So how does it work? Jesse, with the the players that are invited into Wimbledon mm -hmm. for the for the junior players. Yeah, there are some there are some national and international tournaments, and typically what happens, and I'm not exactly sure how Wimbledon does it, but typically what happens is that different um, national sport organizations are granted you know spots that they okay. can then invite players uh, to attend you know on to, and represent the country. So so in order to be invited you probably need to play in a national or international yeah you're you're gonna have a national ranking and a pretty high national ranking probably okay. top 10 you know okay. and uh i don't even know if they'd go down to 15. i yeah. mean you know probably the top five or or six seven players oh so when they have the rankings on wimbledon those are international rankings right the seeds the seeds yes yes so ingrid neal could be a top seed in the u.s but not be it right in the seed, seed. not be seated at wimbledon, wimbledon. wimbledon. yeah and that's okay. that's what the situation is so okay. yeah and then caroline dolhide Mm -hmm. of the U.S. Uh, this morning defeated Olivia Jandramulia. Yeah. I think she's from Australia. Yeah, I think so too. 6-4, um, 6-2. Six, six, All so right, go, go Caroline. Caroline. Yes. And then Sophia Kennan of U.S. is the ninth seed. And she is going to play Jill Teichman. Teichman. Okay, from, Teichmann. from Switzerland. This has been a, uh, we're learning a, how to I, pronounce names. I take, I'm following you. <laughs> <laughs> I, they roll off your tongue much better than they roll off mine. <laughs> I'm going to let you take I this next it. one. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say that's Yusui Maitan or Arcanada, and she's from the U.S. Yusui. Yusui? I would say Yusui or Yusui. Okay. Um, Arcanada, and she's number six. Yeah, that's so fantastic. It's a name we need to learn how to pronounce. It is, yes. She'll be taking on Lucy Wagner. Yep. Uh, or Warnier of France. Yes. So those are the girls' singles second round today. Uh, and again, I did not find any girls okay. doubles from the U.S. playing in the first round today of the doubles. Yeah, they probably have um, the singles players, you know, the, if you're playing singles, they probably have the doubles scheduled the next day, most yeah. likely, if they're playing singles yeah. and doubles. So. Well, and folks are probably catching a little bit of the Wimbledon right on right here behind us. Yeah. Um, Got a game going on right now. Well, that's mm -hmm. kind of interesting graphic they're showing. Yeah. The distribution. Clearance over the net. Yeah. So, you know, Wimbledon was first televised um, in 1937. Wow. Yeah. Matches were transmitted by the BBC from Center Court mm -hmm. for up to half an hour each day. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you get to just, just a little, a little snippet. A little taste. Yeah. I bet that word snippet didn't exist then. It probably didn't. <laughs> we didn't have the digital age yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's, you know, 1937. And yeah. They've been televising it for quite a while. It was in 67 when they uh, had the first ever color broadcast. Okay. Written, where color televisions came on. Mm -hmm. And they had... Um, more than 80 broadcast organizations wow. there. Probably a lot of international yeah. ones as well. So, But now there's more than 2,500 broadcasters that are working in what they call Broadcast Center at Wimbledon. Wow. Um, it's kind of like here, yes. Broadcast Center right at, here. at Huther Match Point. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the host broadcaster is, is and probably always will be the BBC. BBC. Yeah. BBC. Yeah. Um, here in the U.S., coverage is is provided by the contract broadcasters ESPN and the Tennis Channel. Yes. So if you're looking for games, check ESPN. I notice a lot of them on ESPN too. Yes. Or Tennis Channel if you get that. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you're a tennis player, I'm sure. Yes. That's something that you want to have. If Definitely. You don't have yes. So there, are, there. Are, excuse me. 
nine courts that have live television coverage. So even yeah. though there's 20 courts there, mm -hmm. they only have nine yeah. that are televised. And after the first week, they drop that down to seven. Okay. So I did not know that. But that's still more than any other Grand Slam tournament. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. Televised. That's pretty cool. Yeah. They use over a hundred cameras around the grounds during the championships. Can you imagine? That's that? amazing. That's all the technology that's going in and yeah. bringing those different angles together yeah. to capture those shots. And then the commentators. Yeah. There's over 120 commentators that are providing around, commentation. Around center court. Yeah, that's the center court alone. That's amazing. That's a, really amazing. Yeah. Wimbledon is really, it's, you know, it's the tournament that if you're a tennis fan, I mean, you, you want to go there and, and be a part of that at least once. And I haven't had that opportunity yet, but it yeah. is definitely the tradition. And well, it's, uh, it's fun to... It's fun to follow it and try and see as much mm. as a person can see yeah. um, of the games there. And, yeah. And the guts tennis. So I did pull up some of the rankings too. Okay. Before, um, before Wimbledon, they're coming mm. in on June 30th. Okay. And just to see how many American singles players mm -hmm. we had ranked in the top hundred. Sure. And um, it appeared that we only had six men mm -hmm. in the top hundred. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. We have uh, John, John Isner, Isner yep. and he was number 17. Yep, he's a, in. kind of the top American yep. right now. And uh, Jack, Jack Sock is a young up-and-coming player, and okay. people are really looking to him to... Yeah, he's only 22. Yeah, he's only 22 years old, so... And he, he's ranked 31, right? He's ranked 31. He actually, uh, he and um, Papasil, Vas Vassal Papasil from Canada, won okay. the Wimbledon doubles last year. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So he has a Wimbledon title under his belt. Now he's going to go be going in there for more. Huh? Yeah. And Sam Query, so he's uh, at 36. Um, Steve Johnson at 52. Uh, Donald Young uh, is ranked at uh, number 58. And then uh, Tim, I always butcher his name too. Smizek? Smizek. Smizek? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, at 77. Yeah. And you know, um, Jack Sock is the youngest of mm -hmm. the American players that are in the top 100 at 22. Yes. And John Eisner is the oldest at 30. Yep. So 30, you're probably getting... Yeah, and Eisner is a big guy. I mean, he's like, I think he's 6'10". I mean, he is just such a tall guy. And he's, you know, he's moving around the court and, uh, you know, he's got some big feet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd be when, tripping he, over my when feet. he holds his racket, it looks like this little puny thing, so... Mm. Well, and on the women, we have a... Uh, we have quite a few in the top 100. Yes. Of course, Serena Williams is number mm -hmm. one. And Serena is what now? She must be... Let's see, 81. She's born in 81, 91. 19. She's got 34. Yeah, 34. 34 does it seem I can't believe, no. I can't, are... no. And so Venus is like 35 or 36. Yeah. So. Wow. And That's... Venus is number 16. Yep. Next highest ranked player. Yeah. Madison Keys, as we yes. talked about earlier, she's 21 and... She's a young player. She is, yeah. She's just going to turn 20 years yeah. old here. Or actually probably, yep, yeah. has did last February. Um, and then we have Madison Brangle, mm -hmm. who's number 36. And she is 25. 25. Yeah. yeah. Sloane Stevens. Stevens. Yeah, she's another up-and-comer with a, you know, she's a 22-year-old player. 22-year-old player doing really well. Ranked number 43 mm -hmm. at the end of June. Um, I, I've not heard of Varvara Lepchenko. Yeah, she actually yeah, represented yeah. the U.S. at the Olympics, yeah. the last Olympics. So. Yes, I do remember. I yeah. just didn't remember her at her first name. Was. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she's at 38 right now. Allison Risky. Yeah. Risky or Risk? I think it's Risk. Risk. Uh, another 25-year-old player, mm -hmm. number 42. Yeah. And then Coco Vandeweghe yeah. went in at 48. And look yeah. How great she's doing. Yeah. Right into now. the she's quarters. In the top 32. Actually, didn't she get into the quarters? Yeah, she played so round she of 16 went, yesterday yeah, and she's won. The 16. Yep. So, um, and she is. Oh gosh, she's that's gonna. 24. Yeah, that's gonna really impact her yeah. ranking positively. So. Oh yeah, she has to be on yeah. pretty quickly. Christina McHale. Yep. Um, number sixty-three, and then Irina Falconer. Falconer. Yep. Um, Seventy-three. And yep. And then these players are all right around that twenty-five. Yeah. Age mark. Yep. So. Lauren game Davis. As you go along. Yes. Lauren yep. Davis at seventy-nine. Mm-hmm. And then we and have one more. Yeah, Shelby Rogers uh, coming in at number 83. Okay. So, so you know, it's just a, another, look at all the women that are yeah. are dominating. Yeah, definitely. Well here, obviously the number one ranking. So, you know, That's it's fantastic. Power. Yes. You go, girl. Yeah. <laughs> a, a week to remember the, the power yeah. of women's, women's sports. Exactly. And, you know, I have to give some credit to Title IX. Oh, for sure. Um, 
I know people oftentimes say, well, did the Title IX work? Well, obviously yeah. it did. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, when you look back historically, they really, you know, they look at the 1996 Atlanta Olympics as being kind of the Olympics of the woman athlete, and then the 99 with the World Cup win. Yep. So kind of there was this, you know, uh, there's always been growth, but a particularly strong growth around the late 90s. And I wonder now if the, you know, the World Cup win, and, you know, we're seeing tennis increase in terms of, you know, our, our success, you know, if that's going to have another sort of impact to boost women's yeah. sports overall. I hope so. Um, you know, getting out there, staying active, mm -hmm. um, not only learning and participating in team sports and in individual sports is great for you, but it is. a lifetime a lifetime commitment to fitness. Exactly. A, another thing. That of moving and enjoying yep. it and having fun. Enjoying so. your, the, your body movement. Yep, so. exactly. Well, you know, we've got a special guest coming up. We do. We'll be talking with Phil Brower. Yes, your, he's our your, uh, new sidekick. Our new tennis director here at Heather Family Match Point. We're so excited to have him on board. Yeah. And so. Well, let's hear from our sponsors, and uh, we'll be right back. Great. With Phil Brower. All right. Thank you. Rep the 605 with Tennis 605 apparel from our clothing partner, Dakota Lettering. Just click on the store banner on the Tennis 605 website to see a wide variety of styles and colors. Want more options? Visit the store for an almost unlimited variety. Tennis 605 Clothing. Represent. Three, two, one. Well, welcome back, everyone. We're here again with This Week on the Courts, and again, I'm Jesse. Carol. And we have a special guest with us. We have Phil Brower, who is our new tennis director out here at Huther Family Match Point, and has moved here from the Minneapolis area most recently. So, Phil, welcome on board. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Welcome to South Dakota Tennis. Thank you. Yeah, we're very excited to have you here, and uh, I'm sure that a lot of people are wondering who you are and what your experiences are. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, I mean, I started playing tennis uh, sixth grade and play high school tennis, played college tennis. Uh, started working at a tennis facility when I was a sophomore, between sophomore and junior year. Mm -hmm. And really uh, just love teaching. I would teach, my family has somewhat of a teaching background, so mm -hmm. um, just love the game. And most recently I was at Lifetime Fitness in Minnetonka uh, for four years, and prior to that I was a college coach for eight years, um, both for men and women. And where did you coach college at? MSU Mankato. Okay. Division two school. And you were a wrestler too, right? I was a wrestler. And baseball player. Wrestler, and kind of wrestler, did a lot baseball of... player. Okay. At what point did you kind of decide to? Did you pick up tennis after those sports, and then decide um, to focus on tennis? Or no. I, well, I started wrestling at a really young age. My mm -hmm. my uncles had a wrestling background and coaching background, so I started that pretty much as early as I can remember. I don't mm -hmm. really remember when I started, but. It was pretty young. And then played a lot of baseball and then decided that baseball was too slow for me. Yeah. <laughs> and wanted wanted some extra time, uh, just a lot more activity. Yeah. And I mean my parents would go out and they had some friends they would play tennis with and we just kinda of smack the ball around and and then uh, my brother and I got really serious about it and just from there on no. out it was And this was in Nebraska or Minnesota? Uh, this was in Minnesota. Okay. Yep. So uh, the big thing was just the activity. I mm -hmm. wanted more more activity, and tennis gave me that. So, so you definitely will get that with tennis. Exactly. <laughs> you know, standing around waiting for your turn at, turn yeah. at, at taking a shot, right? Well, yeah. that's one of the things I liked about the individual sports is, I mean, you, it's you and somebody else, and you just go, go, go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't have to rely on anybody else. It's yeah. pretty self, self-dependent. So. Yeah. so And that wrestling probably helped prepare you for that. That's true, yeah. Um, you know, be, being able to take personal responsibility on the mat, mm -hmm. the same thing on the court. Yep. Exactly. Uh, you know, one of the things that we talk about a lot is uh, the importance of multiple sports. Sure. I think kids try in a lot of different sports, and uh, there's there's different parts of your body that each one of them uses. Mm -hmm. Do you think that those participating in those, those other sports helped you with tennis? Definitely. I mean, just eye-hand coordination, um, body control. I mean, with wrestling, it's, I mean, it's very physical, and you have to have good balance. I mean, if your balance is poor, the other guy's going to take you down, and there's just nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the balance is, to me, the biggest thing that I got out of wrestling. Um, also, a work ethic, because wrestling practices are unbelievably difficult, um, very physical. I mean, you get bumps, bruises, 
doesn't matter. You have to fight through it. Yeah. And, well, and obviously, you don't get quite as many bumps and bruises in tennis. <laughs> we still, I you mean, still it's, yeah. physically, it's, it's obviously exhausting just in a yeah. different way. So. Well, and the focus and concentration right. are really important in wrestling. It's a mm-hmm. very short time period, very intense yeah. time period. Right. And you still have to, with tennis, you have to have that focus and concentration for a much more extended period of time. Which is why I had some issues at first. <laughs> Actually, for quite a while. It took me some time. Sometimes yeah. the kids that really like the activity aren't so good at the focus and concentration. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, that's where, I mean, if your concentration and, and focus isn't good, I mean, that's where tempers start to flare. And mm-hmm. I, if anybody knows me, I had some issues with that. So <laughs> well, took some time to, to work with that. Working through those. Well, you know, one of the things, um, obviously, you're now a tennis professional mm-hmm. um, working in the, in the field of, in tennis, but what are some of the other things that you think playing youth sports helped you develop in terms of life skills? Sure. I mean, just... I mean, with with high school tennis, I mean, it's just the, the team atmosphere. Uh, you're playing an individual sport, um, but it's not just about you. So, I mean, you have to learn how to deal with other people, different personalities. Um, I mean, coach, I coached tennis for a long time, and so, I mean, you have to, it's really about team camaraderie and, and trying to create an atmosphere that's uh, going to help everybody perform at their, their highest levels. Um, and just, I mean, that's the biggest thing just really learning how to work with other people. Um, I mean, academically, too, it's huge just because you have to, you know, to play high school sports or college sports, you have to have the academic portion. If you're failing at that, you're not going to be able to play your sport. So it, it creates some accountability um, to become a better better student as well, which obviously is more important. So. Yeah. Well, and at the risk of harping on the same topic, that focus and concentration that you develop through, through athletics applies back to doing right, homework and, right. and the and future time applies management. to yes. Yep. So there, there's so many skills that, that you develop exactly. through that youth sports and we're, we're thrilled yeah. to thrilled to keep talking about those. Yes. <laughs> um, now obviously you haven't been on the on the job too long. How mm-hmm. many days is it? Uh they say when Wednesday. It's been two days. It's your third day, day three. Right? Day three. Yes. So day three, you've been on the on the, on the job for three days. So what are you what are you seeing in South Dakota tennis and what do you what what is your experience of South Dakota sure. tennis? So, I mean, I've been to South Dakota quite a few times for tournaments that Mary Thompson ran back in the day. Um, always loved South Dakota and it's in the Sioux Falls area. Uh, great place for tennis. The, I mean, the atmosphere is, I mean, it's a great tennis atmosphere. So, and obviously there's facilities that have done a really good job up to this point. And I, I mean, just it, working on expanding from there. Um, it's going to be a you know, community effort. It's not just one person or one facility. It's going to be everybody working together to build, the, build Sioux Falls tennis and South Dakota tennis to bring it to new levels. Yeah. Well, and to have a beautiful facility like this to work in, it's got it to be. Is. Yes. I'm sure it you've worked nice. in some very nice facilities. Yes, I have. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're pretty thrilled to have this one here. Yes. And, um, looking it forward very to nice. Getting to some of the other locations as mm-hmm. well. So I see you're, you're, you're repping here. You got it. <laughs> Who are you going for at Wimbledon, I'm wondering? I would like to see Roger win one more. Yes, me too. Hopefully it happens. Yes. I mean, he's playing well so far, so hopefully yeah. that, yeah. that works out well. Rain yeah. Delay. Yeah, rain Is she on right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully Roger can pull one out. And yeah. It would be nice to see him get one more before he... It would. would have been nice if uh, Djokovic would have lost yesterday to that would Kevin probably Anderson. Help. That probably would have helped, helped yeah. the cause, but yeah. hopefully it warmed down a little bit. It doesn't matter, though. <laughs> so, go Roger. Yeah, go Roger. <laughs> How about on the women's side? Hmm. I'd probably like to see Sharapova. Yeah. It's going to be a tough semi She's, with uh, it's, Serena. It's going to be tough. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to that um, one. Serena's obviously playing. She just... Step above everybody. Yeah, what can you say? I mean, yeah. it's gonna be tough. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a couple of people I, I was hoping for, but I mean, right now I'm like hoping Chair Pope can pull it out. Yeah. So. Well, we're looking forward to seeing all the great things that you're gonna be Thank working you. on here. Um, and you know, we do have that question. Right. Yeah. We have kind of a fun question okay. for everyone so, that comes on the show. Yeah, we're. Put you on um, spot a little. Yeah. There's a there's something that happens in tennis sometimes and. You know, I don't think there's a name for it, and we're thinking if we can find a name for it that maybe we could, you know, make this stick. It'd yeah. be an idea that would stick. Yeah. And so we'll get it trending. And yeah, get it trending. So you know, when when you Instagram have Instagram it. Instagram, Instagram it. it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So tweet when it. Yeah, well, do, tweet it. Yeah. yeah. So so when you when you when you know when a player swings, and the ball gets stuck in the throat of their racket. Mm-hmm. What what do you do you know if that's called anything? I have never heard a name. 
but I think I can come up with one. All okay. right. Call it a choker, it's being that it's the throat. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's the throat. Yeah. That makes, makes sense. sense. It would, uh, yeah. yeah. It's I, stuck in there pretty good. Exactly, yeah. and it's in the throat. Yeah. And maybe we can do even more of a play on that, the choker. The choker. Oh, yes. It yeah. can be taken many different ways. Yeah, <laughs> I like that yeah. one. So, mm, that's a good one. That's really good. See, yeah. if, we could, see if we can tweet it and yeah. make it a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, started by <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Phil Brower at Youth exactly. Family Match Point. The choker. The choker. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now we finally have a name for that. Yeah. I we'll have to work out our Heimlich's now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Well, Phil, thanks so much for Thank joining for us on this me. week on yeah. the courts. Yeah, uh, looking forward to having you back on and, uh, many times and, and getting your feedback on, on how things are going here in South Love Dakota. it. And once again, welcome. We're Thank so you. happy to have you here. So. Thank you. Yep. Exciting times ahead. Yes. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. You've worked hard all year. I need you to bring it. Dig down deep today. Because today, everybody plays. Everybody plays. Everybody plays. Everybody plays. Play. When we first learned to work together, it was through play. We learned social skills, give and take, freedom and teamwork through play. There's no age limit on play, no skill level required. Played against sports knows play. We buy and sell new and quality used sports and fitness equipment for less. So everybody can play. Sports. Play it again, sports. Play it again, sports. The official sponsor of all those that play. Welcome back, folks. It was fun talking with Phil and sure really was. happy to have him here. Yeah, super excited. Yeah. So it's gonna be a great addition to, to the tennis community and across the state. It will. It will. So So you know this is the time when we talk about upcoming tournaments. We mm -hmm. do have some good ones coming up. We do have a few coming up. So the the first tournament coming up this coming weekend is the Brookings Junior Open and mm -hmm. so that's a really good uh, tournament. Uh, they get a lot of good players there and uh, you know really a fun time there in Brookings. So yeah, and then players can go straight from there. To the CC Lee up in Aberdeen. In Aberdeen. So that one, the Brookings tournament is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the CC Lee is scheduled on Monday and Tuesday. So it's, you know, really nice to kind of get two tournaments right in a row back to back. And I believe the registration is still open. I think it closes today for the CC Lee. For the CC Lee. The, so. the Brookings is closed. Yeah. Uh, but uh, register for the CC Lee and, um, you know, get out there and play some tournaments. Yeah, go out there <laughs> and enjoy your newfound tennis skills. Yeah. Keep working on them. Mm -hmm. Then at the end of this month, we also have um, the Astor Clayton Open. Open, right? Yeah, that's here in Sioux Falls, and so typically um, the the S4 Junior Open is is in late May or early June, and we had the South Dakota Junior Open, but this year, in conjunction with the Adult uh, South Dakota Open, uh, is the National Public Parks Tournament, and so that's going to be held here in Sioux Falls. Uh, we anticipate a larger draw uh, with the National Public Park uh, flavor to that tournament, and so in addition to the Adult events, there's also going to be the Junior events, and uh, the Brookings or not Brookings, the Brandon CTA is. Um, you know, kind of helping with that because that traditionally is their junior tournament. Okay. So we're combining it this year and uh, you get a chance right here in Sioux Falls to play in a national tournament. Wow, that's really Yeah. Important. And you can register online. You can register online. Are open. Mm -hmm. um, just go to tennislink.usta.com. Yep. Go to the tournaments and register there for for the Asper Clayton Junior and Adult Open and yep. the National Public Parks Tennis Championships. Yeah, that's so pretty exciting. Really exciting. We're looking forward to that too. Um, and then also at the end of the the very end of the month, on mm -hmm. the 31st, we have the Yankton Lewis and Clark Adult and Junior, junior Tennis. Oh. Right. So the Junior Tournament is a level six, and uh, play begins on July 31st. And so come and check that tournament out, and you know a lot of great opportunities to play throughout the state and get some good competition. And again, register online. Yep, Tennis Link. Dot USTA com. And I think that's all the tournaments we have for the rest of the month. Yeah. Um, but there's a, there's a spot for you to play somewhere in a tournament. Definitely. So. Yeah. So get out there and swing the racket. Yeah. Swing a racket. Um, stay fit and enjoy playing tennis. Yeah. Meet some new friends and Maybe. renew some old friendships out on the court. Yeah. And get a little exercise. All yeah. right. Well, it's probably time to wrap up. We, we've had a great show talking about Wimbledon, meeting yeah. Phil. Um, 
looking forward to next week's show. Definitely. Uh, stay tuned with us, uh, as always, here on Tennis 605 for this week on the courts as we talk tennis, mm -hmm. South Dakota tennis, but of course we have to talk Wimbledon when that's, go that's going on. Definitely. Um, and we want to thank our sponsors. We'll have a message from our sponsors, and you can get your, your own yeah. customized Tennis 605 Love it. apparel from <laughs> our good friends and our official apparel provider at Dakota Lettering and Dakota Sports. want to welcome, welcome them as a sponsor and a provider for mm -hmm. uh, Tennis 605 apparel. So thanks for joining us, folks. We'll be back with you next week. Go out and enjoy some tennis. I'm Carol McKee. And I'm Jesse Daw. And you are Tennis, tennis 605. 605. Bergen Bites has a huge supply of refurbished electronics. They're a Microsoft authorized refurbisher. Just look at this. Computers as low as $100 and a wide variety of electronics, all so affordable. Look at these deals. A Dell 4-core laptop, fully tested, only $200. A MacBook, fully tested and ready to go, only $200. Subscribe to the Bargain Bites YouTube channel and get all sorts of great tips from super technician Brendan. Bargain Bites, just east of the airport off Benson Road. Visit them today online at bargainbites.net.